I'm Scott Sheldon, and welcome to this episode of Winegazer. Thank you so much for tuning in. So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you some of the wine tools that I use on a regular basis. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is called the wine skin. And I was up in uh, Napa Valley, Sonoma, a few weeks back, and I was hanging out at Viance Winery, where I was married just over a year ago, just visiting the people, uh, doing some wine tasting, and the event coordinator who helped us with everything, she gave us a bottle of wine to bring back. And I hadn't planned on bringing any wine back with me to LA, so I grabbed one of these wine skins, just threw the bottle in there, and uh, decided it'd be a good test too, to see you know how this product works. And happy to report that I came home, and a nice bottle of wine intact. From Vianza, we have a 2010 Arnaise which is a, a white grape coming from Piedmont region of Italy. And for years it was used actually as a blending grape to, uh, in Barolo wines to soften the harsh tannins of the Nebbiolo grape. And basically that uh, style of winemaking, they really went away from that, started making 100% Nebbiolo uh, for the Barolo. Stopped using this as a blending grape and what happened was this was on basically the brink of extinction in Italy and um, they started making white varietal uh, Arnaise wines and they started becoming very popular and in the Piedmont dialect Arnaise actually means little rascal because it can be a difficult grape to grow and um, you'll see it in Australia and California and New Zealand a little bit and it's kind of the same way like in the Northern Rhone area of France, they would use Viognier, a white grape, when you're blending in with Syrah and some of these other heavier, dark, tannic uh, red wines. So kind of interesting, nerdy stuff. And so the first tool I guess I'll share with you since we need to open the wine is, uh, I take that back. We need to set the wine down, so we're gonna use a wine coaster. Very nice little thing that you can use, a little accessory for entertaining, just at home, keep it from dripping all over your um, table if you're a messy pourer. So the screw tap, this is the kind of corkscrew that I like to use, I'll show this to you. It has a nice knife there for cutting the foil, you can see the corkscrew. It actually has a double action on the actual opener, makes it easier, gives you more leverage when opening the bottle, especially if it's a really tight cork. So um, another trick I'll show with you is, sh I'll show to you is uh, taking the foil off. Sometimes you don't have to cut it. Grab the bottle, twist, and sometimes you can actually take off the foil. As simple as that. So I'll show you how this opener works. Just get it open like that. started and I'll show you the actual double action where you push in brings it halfway up and just makes it a lot easier to open very smooth doesn't take much effort okay so on to the next tool this one I think you'll really like this is a measuring cup has teaspoons, ounces, milliliters, cups, grams, everything on there. It's very handy, like if you want to do a bunch of two ounce tasting pours, you know, for a bunch of friends, you just go to the ounces, you know, pour in two ounces, boom, there you go. And then it shows you a split, you know, some of these other, shows you a wine glass, five ounces, fun thing. And it's really nice too, if you're somebody who's counting calories, you know, you're really uh, concerned about how many ounces of wine you're drinking per night because you, you're only allotting maybe a certain amount of calories towards wine drinking. You know, it's a cool thing. Um, next tool, you got a decanter here, very simple container, nothing fancy. And you just pour the wine in here, allows it to aerate. If you have an old red wine where there's sediment, it allows the sediment to come down to the bottom and sit. So you're basically just looking for something that has a wide opening to let the air in. And um, you know, with red wines, a lot of times you like to let them sit for a couple hours. You know, let a lot of that alcohol breathe out. Um, let's talk about stemware. 
So, there's a couple different glasses that I use at home. And this is basically it for me, at least for right now. I use this for kind of big reds, and I like this for light to medium reds or for white wines. And um, I don't really see the need to have, you know, eight or nine different types of stemware. And you can have like a champ champagne flute is also nice. Something like this for drinking champagne. Oh, this is pretty dirty. I should have cleaned this before. Um, and then when we're talking about stemware, don't store it in here. This is totally the wrong place to store your glasses. You will be literally smelling the wine and smelling the inside particle board of your cabinet. And so you'll be maybe smelling a nice stainless steel white wine, but you'll be smelling the wood from your cabinet. So. Um, basically, you know, when you're cleaning your glasses and you get them all ready, don't put them back in there. Keep them out somewhere where they're not going to absorb uh, that wood smell. Um, another thing we have here is called the uh, Venturi. This is like a wine aerator. And what it does is if you don't have the time to decant the wine and you want to get some oxygen into it, you just pour this in. See what that does, just aerates the wine. And I'm actually thinking about doing a, uh, a test. Maybe this could be another episode where we do the different ways, of, you know, the canteen versus like the Venturi versus the guy online that I was just reading about who says that you pour your wine into a blender and turn it on. That's the best way to aerate it. So it could be kind of an interesting comparison. Um, let's give a little sniff of the wine. So you got some nice white peaches coming through, a um, little bit of almonds, kind of like a marzipan quality. You know, Arnais wines, they're known for being light to medium body, kind of crisp, a little bit dry. Um, the ones from California tend to be a little bit more acidic. It's one of these grapes where um, if you don't pick it uh, early enough, it gets overly ripe and loses a lot of its uh, acidity. the color there. Yeah, very dry and crisp. Um, also very floral, which is nice. Nice like jasmine flowers. Yeah, it's like stone fruits, peach, apricot, little minerality. A nice pear on the finish coming through. Really nice white wine, uh, low on the minerality, a lot of acidity, and again, a lot of stone fruits, apricot, good stuff, good stuff. Um, okay, wine bucket, I knew I was forgetting something. So this is kind of dual purpose, you know, you can use this as a spit bucket or uh, fill it up two thirds full of ice, drop in the wine bottle, fill the rest up with water, and in about 20 minutes, you got a nice ice cold white wine. It's also good for putting a chill on a red wine, especially like a lighter red, uh, like a Beaujolais, even a Cabernet Franc um, can really benefit from a little bit of chill on the wine. Um, it's better than putting it in the freezer and forgetting about it and then having a disaster. Uh, but if you do go the route in the freezer, 20 minutes will give you also a nice uh, cold white wine generally. Um, what else can we talk about? Ah, uh, yes. This is a little indirect, but let's talk about, you know, a lot of people enjoy cheese when they're having their wine. So we're gonna share with you the cheese knife that I like to use at home. A little serrated blade, nice holes in the blade so that the cheese doesn't stick to it. And then I love these slate uh, serving boards for cheese and crackers and fruit and stuff. Um, it's not a cutting board. You're not supposed to use this to actually cut the cheese on, but just for serving. It's, to me, it's really, really cool looking. I like the earthy component to it. And um, set our wine on the wine coaster. One more taste of the wine before we conclude the show. And the Vianza 
uh, started by the uh, Sebastiani family back in 1989, and it's changed hands a few times. Uh, it's owned by some big corporation now, I think. I'm not really sure who. Um, still making good wines, though. I, I really like uh, this uh, Arnais. I would go 86 points on this wine. Uh, solid white wine, uh, good with shellfish, with shrimp, maybe uh, like a light white fish, and um, maybe even some sliced pears and some prosciutto, like as an aperitif little appetizer, that'd be really cool. So I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, this little nerdy insight to uh, some of the wine tools that I enjoy using. And I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, maybe, you know, what are your favorite uh, wine tools at home? What kind of opener do you use? Uh, do you use a Venturi? Do you like to use a decanter? Uh, I'd really appreciate, you know, hearing your feedback on that because um, that's just the kind of nerdy stuff that I like to, you know, <laughs> read about. So. Uh, Again, hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time, cheers. Hey, I almost forgot. The wine fridge. Couldn't uh, make an episode about the wine tools and not go over the wine fridge. Got this baby at Costco a few months back, $199. Holds 28 bottles. A little digital readout on the top. And um, it's got a cool LED light that you can turn on. And... Uh, you can say I have it chilling at 55. I have noticed that on some of the warmer days, it will uh, creep up to 56, 57 degrees. So if you're looking for something to seriously age wine, um, this may not be the way to go. However, if you're looking for something that's casual to keep your wine cool, um, you, I think you, uh, you know, it's a pretty good choice. So, so far I've been really happy with it. And um, I'll show you the inside. So it holds, supposedly holds 28 bottles, uh, depending upon the kind of bottles. Um, you know, some of the champagne bottles and some of these other ones are a little bit bigger around, um, have a trouble fitting in uh, these shelves. And so that's basically it. So hope you enjoyed the wine fridge and their little episode on the uh, tools that I use at home. And again, I'd love to hear your comments about some of the tools you use at home. So until next time, cheers.